What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Established Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. I'm Drew Dinkmark here with Mike Gallagher to walk you through tonight's nine-game slate in the association, one that is filled with injury question marks um, and a lot of downgrades that we just got on the 130 injury report. It's late season NBA. There's seven teams involved in back-to-backs today, uh, but back end. So there's a lot to cover here. With me, do as always, Mike Gallagher. Mike, how are you doing today? Catching up. Uh hike regretted it i really needed one today after you know writing matchups last night but uh catching up here so uh we'll, we'll kind of catch up on the fly uh excited to talk through it. we got a lot of information in the last 30 minutes so it's a it's a doozy today yep certainly helpful with that 130 injury report let's get into the games let's start with the lakers and washington lakers one of these teams on the back end of a back-to-back here anthony davis and lebron james both listed questionable gabe vincent off the injury report after being listed out last night due to injury management is still without Jared Vanderbilt and Christian Wood and Jalen hood Shafino. We thought that the Lakers might try to kind of sit one uh, of the two stars and play the other through these two games, but they were able to kind of play effectively last night through a blowout win in Toronto. What are your expectations on what they have available to them tonight uh, in Washington? Yeah, Darvin Ham said in all likelihood that they are going to be in, speaking about LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Um, I think Anthony Davis is pretty close to a lock here. Uh, don't have a you know uh, too much to go on. Uh, LeBron said he's going to see how he feels in the morning. We know he's been sitting a lot more than Anthony Davis has, uh, excluding that time when Anthony Davis bumped into Chris Middleton's knee, played 52 minutes. Uh, certainly a time when you know guys deserve uh, to sit out. But for now, seems like they're in. Uh, on top of the uh, Gabe Vincent, they also have Cam Reddish back. Uh, Cam Reddish didn't travel to Toronto, and uh, they said they have an update today for personal reasons. You think that was like a multiple game thing, but he's going to meet them apparently. Um, in DC, some I thought maybe it's like a travel thing. Um, he hasn't played in Toronto since his rookie season. I was looking into that, but um, yeah, so I'm expecting him to be fully loaded. As you mentioned, the minutes were pretty light yesterday, uh, thanks to D'Angelo Russell going flamethrower uh, to start the fourth to help us out on an over. So, yeah, expecting the same starting lineup. Uh, we'll get Gabe Vincent in, he'll be ramping up. Uh, should take Max Christie mostly out of the rotation, uh, and then turn Pence's minutes a, a little bit more vulnerable with Cam Reddish, uh, likely to play as well. All right, let's go to the Wizards side of that game where they've listed Marvin Bagley out in addition to Bilal Koulibaly, Tyus Jones, Isaiah Livers, and Landry Shamet. They've got questionable tags on Johnny Davis and Rashawn Holmes. Notable that Kyle Kuzma is not listed on the injury report. Revenge game for Kyle Kuzma, so it appears he is (laughs) good to go. What are your notes here on the Wizards, um, who are also on the second end of a back-to-back here? Yeah, um, big win for them last night. Uh, bad loss for the Bucks, but uh, yeah, that Marvin Bagley thing was. I think he's out of the year. It looked terrible. Need to help off the court. Look, he was going to start crying. Uh, same knee he injured to start years ago, uh, for what it's worth. So, yeah, uh, Kuz will be back uh, in the starting lineup. That'll take Anthony Gill out of the starting lineup, uh, and it should put Rashawn Holmes in the starting lineup. If not, they may. If yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they play Tristan Vucevic. You know, I've been talking about him a little bit. Uh, played pretty well. He's got some floor spacing game. Um, give him a little bit of size. Um, but I think they want to start home, just to mean he's good to go. I uh, and can play full again. Just a minor foot tweak. Um, not something that I don't think requires much of a ramp up. So uh, should be good there. Then if they don't have Johnny Davis, that'll help Jared Butler, uh, who fired away and is limited 17 minutes. Uh, and they did get uh, Eugene Omiuri back. Uh, but he can get squeezed a little bit since they're getting Kyle Kuzma and Holmes possibly back uh, to give him much more front court depth after having – Essentially, like none of it um, with Anthony Gill playing like almost all of the second half. Uh, Tristan Bushevitz started the second half. He played pretty well. Um, and then Omiyuri, yeah, they could, they covered like the whole front court. Uh, and then also Denny Avi has been playing pretty well. Uh, Brian Keith mentioned after the game they're going to try to get him going there. Yeah, if Johnny Davis is out, the guard um, situation gets pretty shorthanded here with basically mm-hmm. just Jared Butler and Jordan Poole as kind of ball handlers. Uh, obviously, Kuzma and Denny Avdia can handle as 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 well, but um, just in terms of guard minutes, if they were without um, Johnny Davis, you'd be looking at Butler, Poole, Kispert, probably taking the overwhelming majority of those minutes between the one and the two spots. So you might see, um, if Davis were out, you might see increased minutes there for Jared Butler as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to Portland and Charlotte. Uh, Portland, doubtful tags for Jeremy Grant and Justin Manaya. Out tags for Malcolm Brogdon, Tumani Kamara, Shaden Sharp, Amprey Simons, uh, Matisse Tybel, and Robert Williams. What are your notes here on the Blazers? 
The Mike Gallagher bad basketball game of the night. Uh, and there are major tank implications. I kind of I started writing this before I even got the news because I knew that there were going to be some outs. Um, and the Hornets did not disappoint. We'll get to them in a second. <laughs> but on a, uh, the lead to me, I'm like nervous DeAndre Aiden gets downgraded. We've seen the Blazers add Q tags more than anybody in the league out of blue. So um, keep an eye on that. I expect him to start. Obviously, the matchup is so good. Uh, so expecting the same starting lineup for now. Uh, Scoot Henderson playing better, still fouling. Maybe there's not enough talent to foul that he could play a bunch. Uh, so I'm actually pretty excited about Scoot Henderson. Uh, he's driving and shooting shooting well off drives. He's like shooting like over 50% over his last handful um, on drives. So really starting to come around um, and then just missing like all their depth. So I'm actually a, a little too high on, on Scoot Henderson today. And in fact, so much so, I gave him the cover boy for a matchup. So clear he's set up for disappointment here. But uh, really excited about Scoot's role. Uh, should know Ashton Haggins only has four games left on his two-way deal. So getting pretty close. We know Shane Sharps, you know, they're leaving the door open. He could return, but um, keep an eye on that. I think Haggins has to play because it's they just got nobody here, um, especially in the backcourt. They've got like two handlers besides him and Scoot Henderson and Delano Banton. Um, all right, Charlotte side where their injury report is very full today. Um, they are going to be without Amari Bailey. LaMelo Ball, Seth Curry, Cody Martin, Vesely Misic, Nick Richards, Mark Williams, who are all listed out. And then they get, gave a doubtful tag to Miles Bridges for a right wrist contusion. Probable tags on Brandon Miller and Grant Williams. So what are we left with here for Charlotte? Yeah, we are left with not a lot. Uh, like when uh, Mari Bailey is getting listed out and you're feeling the squeeze on minutes, that's how down bad you are. So let's start with what we know. We know Trey Mann's going to start for sure. Uh, assuming Brandon Miller doesn't get downgraded for tanking, we know he's going to start for sure. And then Grant getting probable again, assuming he doesn't get downgraded. We know Charlotte, they will routinely rule guys out with probable tags. So again, treating this like a questionable tag uh, because these two teams, uh, let me just pull up Tankathon as, in case I'm not making myself clear here. There, This is one of the biggest games left on the schedule for tanking purposes. Uh, you know, on top of, you know, being the four five, they're a game apart. Um, so and then they, you can maybe, maybe move up to top three uh, to give you best lottery odds if, you know, you just hope Wembenyama wins like a game or two to close out. So this is one of the biggest tank games left on the schedule if you're missing my points here. Um, so, yeah, those are the three guys we know um, for sure. And then, then, then I know, I think I know Nick Smith Jr. will handle the non. Man minutes. Will he also start next to him? Maybe. I think it's one of him or Bryce McGowan's, and then one of uh, Alexi Pokashevsky, who I think's going to start. Um, Davis Bertans, who would be second candidate, um, and then JT Thor would be the third candidate. Uh, Marcus Bolden. I don't think they'd start Bolden together just to give a little bit of Brant Grant cushion uh, in case he picks up some fouls. So for now, um, I, th I think maybe Bryce McGowan's makes more sense to start. So I think for now, Trey Man, Bryce McGowan's. Brandon Miller, I think Pokashevsky uh, starts, uh, and then Grant Williams, and then the bench guys, as I mentioned, Nick Smith Jr., uh, Marcus Bolden, uh, Davis Bertans, and uh, JT Thor would, would fill out the, the rotation here. And uh, Leaky, yeah. Leaky Black also kind of in the mix, too. Yeah, the tricky part about this for, um, for Charlotte here is just simply that, like, last game when they were starting small without Nick Richards, right, that, that was against a Boston team that – yeah, Porzingis can post you up uh, a decent bit, but it's not like a back to the basket, mm -hmm. you know, consistent type player. The game before that, they um, they had Nick Richards available um, against the Clippers, against Zubots. So I'm trying to look back at the other schedule for the other Grant the other Grant Williams start at center game that they had. I'm guessing that was Warriors. I think. Um, no, they had Richards then too. Um, my point I mean, being, though, I'm pretty sure he started every game. Ranchers has sat, so I think that's yeah. Good. But I get what yeah. you're saying. But... My my concern would just be that if it's a matchup thing with size for Aiton, then mm -hmm. you might lean towards Bolden starting, just because like it's different when you're not taking Miles Bridges out of the lineup, um, mm -hmm. because like you're just getting your best players on the floor, and then you're like, okay, Grant Williams, we'll we'll deal with this. We'll get our best players on the floor. Um, when when you have Miles Bridges out of the lineup, you might. You might view it differently. So I think mm -hmm. likely to start. I actually think McGowan's is like the most likely guy to start because um, I mm -hmm. agree with your assessment that um, Nick Smith Jr. is going to be the backup kind of ball handler there. And McGowan's has played ahead of Nick Smith Jr. slightly mm -hmm. of late. And then I think uh, at the four or five spot, 
I would feel much, much more confident that it's definitely not Bolden if you get that eight and downgrade. Um, like, I think there's no <laughs> yeah. way it's it's Bolden if it's like Duop starting or something like that. But I'd say it's maybe like a five, ten percent chance that it's Bolden. Um, and then I'd I'd probably rank, you know, probably probably Poku. The problem with Poku starting is that you might want him in the second unit for some secondary mm-hmm. ball handling. So I kind of think Thor yeah. might start, but it's like yeah. it's that's my really first thought too. Um, but my, so I think the one thing to tie into it is like they're tanking. Who cares? You yeah. Know? So like if you're starting, if you want to play Nick Smith Jr. a lot, start him. You know, that's kind of why. That's kind of why. That's why I think I think if this was like a hey, we actually care a little bit about winning this game. Like, yeah, like I would sur- for sure not say Nick Smith. I would for sure say Poku. But I think if, they want to develop them. That's kind of it's kind of where it's like a very much push and pull. The issue with that is look at the last two months of basketball in terms of what they've put out there. If they were really right. tanking aggressively, we wouldn't see Miles Bridges playing 40 minutes a night. We wouldn't see Brandon Miller playing 40 minutes a night. We would see more of McGowan's Nick Smith Jr. I think Steve Clifford, who news broke today that yeah. he's not going to return at the end of the season, but he is staying on through the rest of the season. If he's still in control, I think he wants to see the most competitive basketball that he can see out there. Like that's the way that they've been managing these games. So that's that's my thought process on it. We'll see. Obviously, a lot of guessing games. The good news is this is one of the earliest games on the slate, so we will have that information. But even so, it's it's different when we've been projecting a really tight rotation and we like know the quality of the players and how they view them versus when it's a really tight rotation and we don't know the quality of players. That leaves a lot of fragility on these secondary guys that we're projecting. We'll start with a big hedge fest and then we'll like dial in a little bit based on starting lineups, but it is fragile. I'll your mic a little bit. Still can't hear you. Oh, popping out now. Yep. Okay. I'll add though, uh, Brandon Miller, uh, if not for the Q tag and now the P tag, I would consider he could be going off. Uh, so keep an eye on and then Trey Mann, probably guarding suit each other. They'll probably guard each other. So these a lot of like, Brandon Miller, Trey Mann, they're, they're going to have, and then Scoot, like we mentioned, these young guys uh, could just have really, really big, big roles. So this is a classic, like bad basketball game in the net here, just because we know some of these young players could play a lot with pretty bad defenses on them. So we're just wrapping up and saying that these young guys who are locked in have big upsides. They do. It's just, fra- it's, it'll just be fragile in terms yep. of trying to project it. Um, let's move to Detroit and Atlanta. On the Detroit side, Kate Cunningham listed questionable with the left knee injury management. They've also got a questionable tag on Marcus Sasser with that upper respiratory illness. Doubtful tag on Taj Gibson and then the normal outs with Simone Fontecchio, Quentin Grimes, Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Stanley Amude. So what's your read on Kate Cunningham's availability tonight? I think he's in, right? We've seen routinely getting this Q tag pretty much every night. Uh, he's been playing great, uh, driving a ton. Uh, touch time, he's like... And all the people who have more touch time than him in his last three games, they're all beating him by like multiple minutes. Uh, he's got a A plus role. We talked about this pretty much all season. Uh, he's playing really well. He's got his jumper going. So um, we saw him go off uh, in the last game against the Grizzlies, who were struggling defensively. So yeah, if he's in there, he's he's certainly viable. We know the Hawks are, are back to being the Coors Field uh, of the NBA uh, with a lot of bad defense lately. So uh, Kate, I think if he's in, he's good to go on top of Marcus Sasser. He was really sick and really struggling. Monty Williams basically ruled him out um, before pregame, but maybe he's feeling better. could be back in the mix. Uh, and then, yeah, Jay, Jay Duran also back after getting his tooth knocked out um, in the last game. So he'll be back playing. He's been playing a lot, been hitting mid thirties minutes more. We know he likes centers against Atlanta. So Cade and Duran could be in pretty good spots. Tucson, Awoma and Troy Brown continue to start. Obviously Ivy, pure secondary score now he has like nothing on ball anymore uh and then we're seeing a decent bit of chemezi metu james weissman's been it's benefited from during last game uh and then a little bit of road and malachi flynn and forney to kind of fill out the back end but, but i would expect those full in mints to go away for the most part if they do get uh, marcus sasser back yeah and they've been pretty comfortable running nine we were debating last game if they'd run 10 against the grizzlies uh jerry lindern gets hurt very early and it ends up being 10 but really that's nine um when you combine duran and like rodin's minutes there so they seem to be running things like fairly tight on the whole which is always you know a little bit tough to trust late in the season for these teams that have nothing to play for on the positive side uh atlanta side of things they're still without trey young anyaka kongu aj griffin muhammad gi and uh Sadiq Bay. So they have Jalen Johnson not listed on the injury report. 
all systems go there. He came off the bench last game with some sort of minutes limitation tied to him. Uh, Vic Crecci lit it up from three in a great matchup for three-point shooting against the Bulls. What are your notes here on the Hawks? Yeah, it, uh, we're back. Uh, is DeAndre Hunter starting? Because Vic crecci has been fantastic uh, ever since he's been – you know, ever since he came out of the booth starting, when I started my when's DeAndre Hunter going to start thing, he's been just great. Um, so much so that, you know, they're going to be in the playing game. Like, he's on a two-way. They they, they want to play him in the in that game. Like, they've got to stand, they've got to convert his contract, um, just to note that. So, but I, I don't know. I still think they're going to start Jalen Johnson and DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter, no more minutes limit. Um, he's playing really well. Uh, Bogdan also. Uh, had a good matchup, didn't shoot a bunch, uh, handled a bunch. Uh, after the game, Quinn Snyder said that he's like really clicking. It's kind of shown. I think Bogdan's in a pretty good rhythm. And then, I mean, I didn't even want to cover boy DeJounte Murray. It was like too easy um, uh, against the Pistons. So definitely a, a massive, massive uh, uh, DeJounte Murray spot. All right, Indiana and Brooklyn on the Indiana side. They just have the G Leaguers listed questionable here, along with Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. He's got that sprained finger that cost him the second half uh, of last game that they went out, and he was he was pacing for you know one of these triple doubles with blocks type games. Unfortunately, he sprains that right finger, which for him you know kind of a big deal. The shooter, uh, shot blocker, like primary hand. Uh, what's your read here on Miles Turner's availability tonight? Yeah, X-ray is negative, which is good, but it was sprained so bad he had to shoot the ball left-handed um, uh, before he checked out for the game. We know players like usually so that just if they could return, you know. So uh, don't have a great read on it. I will see if he tapes up. Obviously, as you mentioned, for a guy who shots block blo- blocks shots and shoots with that hand, and he does shoot as you mentioned, that's not good. So. Uh, definitely chance he misses. Obviously, if he did miss, Jalen Smith would move in the starting lineup, I think. Uh, we Sometimes they may do the third Marin elevate, but I think Jalen Smith played well enough to start Isaiah Jackson back in their rotation. We'll see how small they go if they do go small uh, overall. And then, you know, it would help out um, a little bit of Obi Toppin's minutes. I don't know if they're going to play Pascal Siakam uh, as a five as much. They used Siakam on Cam Thomas a bunch defensively in the last game. Uh, this is a rematch. Uh, so, uh, interesting to note, but yeah, I think that I think I would say Turner's slightly doubtful, but I wouldn't be like betting on it or anything. Yeah, um, and as we saw, Jalen Smith got ejected in this game, so he was on yep. pace to really have a huge game in the absence of Miles Turner. The centers were just going ham against Brooklyn in this one, so uh, if Miles Turner is unable to go, that will provide some value, whether it's Jalen Smith or Isaiah Jackson. Uh, both all all three of them had really efficient games in this previous matchup. On the Brooklyn side of things, Cam Johnson is listed probable. Dennis Smith Jr. listed questionable here. Uh, they're still without um, Keita Bates, Giop, and of course Ben Simmons and some of the G leaguers. But the Cam Johnson probable tag, Dennis Smith Jr. questionable tag, brings some potential added depth back to Brooklyn. What are your expectations tonight? Yeah, we'll see who gets squeezed. We know they're playing uh, Noah Clowney. They're playing uh, Jalen Wilson a little bit. Trenton Watford is apparently the new Delano Banton uh, for guys who just came out of nowhere and are crushing every night. Uh, so he's playing for sure. Uh, I would expect Cam Johnson to come off the bench. Uh, I think they're going to want to stick Dorian Finney-Smith on uh, Pascal Siakam again. Thought he did a pretty good job there. So expecting the same starting lineup for now, I would not be surprised if it was Cam Johnson returning and booting Dorian. But that's my lean. And then we'll see what happens with Dennis Smith Jr. Probably Lonnie getting squeezed. We know that, that one of the bomb, most bombastic quotes from about a player in a negative way uh, was what Kevin Ollie said about uh, Lonnie Walker's like lack of uh, awareness and poor play and you know not playing defensively on the defensive end so i think lonnie's probably at risk here while again like trendon won't play 34 uh trendon watford basically was playing cam johnson's minute so he certainly will be coming down in a pretty significant way all right let's go to oklahoma, oklahoma city and boston which was supposed to be the featured game of tonight but unfortunately it's taken a bit of a dive uh in terms of mm-hmm. player availability here the Thunder on the second night of back-to-back will once again be without Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jay Lynn Williams, Jay Dub. Uh, we saw Jay Lynn Williams, the center, Jay Will, uh, have a big game last night in a matchup specific kind of start against Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Against Boston, a little bit different. What are your expectations in terms of what we see from the Thunder tonight? Yeah, pretty much matched minutes. Like we saw Embiid run that short stint in the first quarter. J- Jay Will came right out with him. Uh, back to the table and beat right out with him. Like they, that was clearly a matchup thing. So it could be something like that if 
Jalen Brown's out. I think if Jalen Brown is in and they're going to start their usual lineup with uh, the Jays, Derek White, Drew Holiday, and Chris Stass, I don't think Jay Will's going to start. So I think if you know that Jay, Jalen Brown Q tag is uh, if he's in, I think they're going to start how we thought they were going to start yesterday before this all started, meaning Case and Wall, uh, Case and Wallace, New Dort, Josh Giddy, uh, Gordon Hayward, revenge game, uh, and then uh, Chet Holmgren back to the five uh, as well. So, yeah, I think it's kind of weird that that uh, Jalen Brown Q take I think could affect things if they might still go that way, but it'd be more likely that they would start Jay Well. Um, to give him a little bit more post defense with a little bit more size, but you know, Gord Hayward, I, I think could cover Horford, and I think Chet, you know, has at least a little bit of length. Uh, Porzingis is a really good post up player, but doesn't really like body you the same way that Embiid or Joker or Sabonis kind of do. So, still think it's pretty unlikely that Jay Will would start, and then again, expecting Casey Wallace, uh, especially when you need the wing defense in, in a really bad way here. Um, you could also make a case that Tyrese Maxey also may have pushed the the starting lineup the way that it went. Hayward over Wiggins still though, because my thought against the wing, yeah. you know wing heavy offense of Boston and Hayward on a back to back that um, you might continue to see Aaron yeah. Wiggins. You had mentioned last week they were trying to get more opportunities for. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't know. Just uh, just the fact that Wiggins was a as a DMP CD last week is kind of why I'm like leaning Hayward, but yeah. um, that could be that too but i think Kaysen's a pretty pretty good bet here yeah i just personally would be pretty concerned about hayward's ceiling on a back-to-back yeah. um after like i'm not sure that that's not part of the reason that he didn't start last night um you know we're speculating yeah. a lot of different reasons matchup specific it might just be injury maintenance specific for gordon hayward that they're not mm-hmm. trying to you know now that they've got him kind of healthy and looking a little bit more like himself not trying to push it a little bit um yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll add Mark Dagnall. He was asked about that, and he said he didn't care about you know the the poor okay. reporting from the uh, Sixers. And it, based on uh, my interpretation, was it was like they were like kind of ready for it, you know? Um, so I think they had like multiple lineup iterations kind of ready based on the beat. Because again, like the reporting on mon- on Monday before the game came out, before the injury report came out, was like Woj was saying he's back, Shams was saying he's back. Yeah, you know, go on down the line. So they were like preparing for him to play. All right, uh, Celtic side of things, Jalen Brown, as you mentioned, questionable with the left hand sprain. Uh, left hand sprain. Uh, Jaden Springer questionable with left knee tendinopathy. Otherwise, the injury report's pretty clean here. What are your notes on the Celtics? Yeah, we saw uh, Jalen Brown not play in the last game. He said he was going to visit a hand specialist in Boston. He is back home now, so I presume that he met that hand specialist yesterday. Uh, he did get some shots up while he was at Charlotte. Didn't really do a full workout. He was kind of just testing it out. Um, so yeah, I don't have a great read on this. Um, we don't know the results of the hand specialist stuff. It's a day-to-day thing. I mean, they listed him questionable, so I feel pretty good. He's, you know, day-to-day, but they could send him out another one. He's had, you know, ankle injury, knee injury. They might just want to, they have nothing to play for. So could see him sit. As I mentioned, Horford would start in his place if he didn't go. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. You know, more Sam Hauser would be a good matchup for him. More Preet and Pritchard, yada, yada, yada. But, uh, pretty minor for Jalen Brown. I wouldn't be like dinging him on best ball or anything like that all right memphis and milwaukee on the memphis side desmond bain is out due to back soreness he joins the list with john morant Derek rose marcus smart yuda watanabe vince williams and zaire, zaire williams all is listed out john contra are still doubtful with right plantar fasciitis so pretty much the same crew that we saw last game for memphis which led to a lot of usage for jaron jackson jr and a really strong performance from him in a win that um the grizzlies desperately did not need um what are your thoughts on what we see from the grizzlies tonight yeah pretty much uh the same story there uh, i think you know good win uh, i think he's got three or four games left something he's got games left i'll do the math in a couple uh when we're running out uh shout ashton haggins four games left so yeah expecting the same starting lineup here um yeah, I think that, um, although actually Giroux, I think is, he didn't play last game anyways, but I think he's off the team now. Uh, let me check that really quick. But yeah, obviously, you know, the the Jaron role was out of this world, man. Led the team in touch time, uh, 23 points on drive. I think he had like 22 drives. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's in a huge, huge spot. Uh, yeah, uh, he's off the, he's off the, he's off the team. Giroux's off the team. So um, yeah, they have uh, Xavier, Xavier, uh, Xavier Simpson now, so. Yeah, but um, yeah, mostly expecting those same guys to start in a, a pretty good condensed rotation. With uh, you know, the matchup got a lot softer now uh, with some some players out. Yeah, 
on the Milwaukee side of the equation, no Patrick Beverly, no Damian Lillard, no Chris Middleton, probable tax for Giannis Antetokounmpo and Marjan Bochamp. Disappointing loss last night for Milwaukee, but in the grand scheme of things, unless you bet on you know Milwaukee seasonal unders, which I did, <laughs> it's probably not an important uh, loss. They still remain two games up in the loss column on Cleveland, um, and Cleveland's you know tough schedule down the stretch means that the Milwaukee's still in pretty good shape with just a few games left here. So, what's your read on Giannis tonight and the rest of the Bucks? So, again, Giannis probable. We've seen him you know be managed with this uh, this hamstring tag pretty much for a while now. He's had probable tags for like a month or a couple weeks now. Um, well, I guess you could say a month because he had the knee probable, the Achilles probable, um, and now the hammy probable. So there's a chance they sit him here and they're just like, you know, what the chips fall where they may. But I think he's in and I think he starts and I think he handles. Uh, so we saw this uh, lineup iteration that's likely going to be Giannis, Pat Connaughton, uh, Jay Crowder, Malik Beasley, and Brooke Lopez. They started together on February 8th and Giannis played 27 minutes. He had like six minutes of touch time and 15 potential assists in 27 minutes. So he might have like over 20 potential assists in a matchup he should crush. The Memphis defense is really bad. I actually bet Giannis triple double at plus 220. Um, I think he's got a pretty good chance, man, because the handling role is going to be massive there. So um, just huge, 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 huge role uh, potentially coming for Giannis. We'll see what they do in the secondary unit. We know they don't really give AJ Green handling. So we'll see if they go to like Ty Ty Washington or Ryan Rollins, just like fill minutes. Um, Content was stuck on the team and touches in this game I'm describing too. So he could handle a little bit uh, overall. Yeah. They took two days off practice to be ready for this Washington game to get a win. And man, um, tough scene. And then they sit everyone out today. So uh, they kind of need this one. Yeah. Um, I think Connaughton probably starts there. Is that your expectation? Yeah, that's what we got. Yeah. 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 Connaughton, yeah. Connaughton crowd are filling in and then Beasley, Brooke, and then Giannis are staying. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, it could there, be, yeah. could be a nice spot start for Connaughton tonight for mm-hmm. DFS players. Uh, Orlando and New Orleans on the Orlando side. Caleb Houston questionable here with the right ankle sprain. Otherwise, it's just the G Leaguers. Um, so what are your notes, if any, on uh, a deep Orlando Magic rotation in a game that all of a sudden, for all my plus 190 Magic Divisional futures <laughs> is important because they've dropped enough games down the stretch to make this game very important. What are your notes on the Magic tonight? Yeah, this is the um, – Could we call, last time you, you renounced the right to call the uh, the good basketball game, you could you could take – Do you want this? I'm, locked, you want I'm this? locked in on this game tonight. Yeah, this yeah, okay. game is is my sweat. Uh, it's, not yeah. only, it's not only for my Divisional bets on the Magic, but it's also just from a – yeah, NBA playoff best ball while you're drafting like this game will impact playoff odds in both conferences in kind of a meaningful way as these teams as Orlando is now sort of slipping closer and closer to mm-hmm. the play in category and New Orleans obviously has as well. So I think this is the most important game on the on the schedule tonight for for yeah. my viewing purposes. The only other one that's close is Cleveland Phoenix, which we'll get to. But yeah, this is this is the Drew Dinkmeyer good basketball game of the night. So uh, yeah, we saw these teams face off last month. I uh, talked about this when we did that show, and I was like, "Yeah, Paolo and and Zion are going to guard each other." They did. Uh, they did. Uh, Paolo actually had a triple double in that game. Uh, so interesting matchup there. And then Franz Wagner should get the herb. So it could be a, a pretty good Paolo spot. Um, other than that, you know, same starting lineup. And again, you know, stakes are high. You know, they're going to play a lot of minutes. Uh, they're coming off almost blowing this like a horrendously bad uh, almost L um, that would have been crippling for for the Magic shares. But yeah, this is a uh, Again, like there's only two games where both teams are motivated to win, uh, and this is one of them. Um, all right, Pell's side, no Jose Alvarado, no Brandon Ingram, but rest assured, Cody Zeller is still available with his face mask uh, and listed on the injury report. What are your notes here on the Pell's? Yeah, you know, just the the sta- – oh, my God, Kelly Linick out now. <laughs> um, uh, are you ready for some Leak Williams? Anyways, uh, Pelicans, so – yeah, again, minutes, right? Like, we're going to get massive minutes. Zion had a, a career high in regulation minutes uh, over the weekend, played 37 in the last game. He's playing a ton, massive handling, massive driving. He's got one of the biggest roles. He's like Jaron Jackson without the blocks and, and without the threes. Um, but really big Zion role. Obviously, the rest is pretty much the same. CJ uh, going to run to a tough matchup, and Jalen Suggs. I mentioned the Zion Power matchup. So um, pretty much um, – you know, we'll expect that. And again, big, big minutes coming here. Pelicans got to get everyone they could get. 
uh, overall. Uh, and then, you know, maybe, maybe Valachunas can hang in there minutes wise. Uh, he didn't hang in there a little bit last time. We saw he, he gets, he gets cratered when it's either a three point happy team or a team that plays fast. Like Lily Green just will not play him. So this is a spot where I think that they need the size. We know Orlando attacks the basket. So maybe Joe Val, the matchup's bad, but maybe he could kind of like get there from the minutes standpoint. Yeah. Um, all right. Toronto and Minnesota. Toronto is, has done it again oh, here. They have yeah. listed out Oshiak Bobby, Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, Chris Boucher, Kelly Olenek, DJ Carton, Jakob Pertl, John Tay Porter, and Bruce Brown is doubtful. I don't know why we get a doubtful tag for Bruce Brown and out on all the other guys. I don't know what differentiates that. But um, basically, what is left uh, for Toronto tonight? Yeah, we're not even going box score. We're going Toronto roster page. Uh, so they signed Malik Williams today. He's on the roster. He's going to play today. He might even start. Um, Freeman Liberty, he'll be in there. He should be the backup. Uh, so we know four starters. Um, actually, we don't know four. We thought we knew four. Now we only know three. Um, but we know Emmanuel Quickly, uh, Gary Trent, and Grady Dick are locked in. Who's starting in the front court? That's the question. They only have like two big wings against the Wolves. Uh, and that's, as I mentioned, uh, Malik Williams, you know, he's 6'11, got some wingspan, definitely can't to start. Um, and then the other guy, Muhammad, Muhammad Ugi, they're gonna cover the center minutes, like for sure. So then I, I guess they cover the center minutes, and then McDaniels, uh, and uh, Jordan War would cover those. So, man, this is bad. This is gonna be, yeah, Godspeed on Godspeed on doing to Toronto uh, rebound baselines. I think. McDaniels is going to get the start. I think that's the brother what I narrative, the brother narrative is yeah. going to come into play here. Yeah, that, um, that gets him a start over Nawara. Also, Nawara more of a scorer, which you get, clearly need in the second unit. You've got at least quickly in Trent um, to potentially get shots up in the first unit. So I would expect um, Jalen McDaniels. And then, you know, yeah. one of these centers that we've very, we've seen very little basketball from uh, playing at the center spot. So uh, incredible matchup for Rudy Kumar tonight. Muhammad Ugi was fun. I, I've been enjoying, you know, uh, I've been enjoying my Muhammad Ugi stuff. He's been fun. He got, he, you know, he's kind of like Bambi. Like he, you know, he's like kind of falling around all the time. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, this is, you know, it's not full on bad basketball game of the night, but bad basketball team of the night for sure. All right, um, let's move to the Minnesota side of things. Where actually, uh, let's stick on Toronto just real quickly. How many players do they have available tonight? Okay, let's count them up. Uh, so I mentioned we got Malik Williams one, Javante Freeman Liberty two, Grady Dick three, McDaniel's four, uh, DJ Carton's out, uh, Manuel Quickly is five, Barrett's out, Bruce Brown's Norn War is six, Gee is seven, Garrett Temple eight. No, no, no. Yes, nine. Trend nine. 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 Yeah, nine. Yeah. So this is going to be a spot where people are going to have to play. Um, mm -hmm. But man, we've talked in the past about like, can they crack a hundred? I can they crack ninety? Um, with this against the Wolves defense, will be interesting to see. So um, mm -hmm. it's obviously going to be relevant from a DFS perspective tonight when you have a team that only plays nine, and most of the most of the players available are going to be near you know, value play prices. Um, mm -hmm. But from a betting perspective tonight, man, this is going to be one of the most challenging projection spots for, for us to yeah. have strong takes on because these guys have never played together. Uh, some of these guys yeah. we have not seen play NBA basketball in meaningful minutes. So it'll be, it'll be challenging for sure. Yeah. Um, I, okay. mean, I mean, hat, hat tip though, like the Raptors, we talked about this for a while. Like, Oh yeah. They're not going to be able to hold top six in the lottery. Just like, that's it, my, yeah. that's it, my to you, man. They are really doing a good job on trying to keep this pick. They've done a good job tanking. Uh, <laughs> Minnesota side, Carl Anthony, <clears throat> Carl Anthony Towns is out, as is Mike Conley. Mike Conley getting the night off due to rest. Uh, what are your notes on what to expect from Minnesota tonight? Yeah, nice win last night. Uh, Anthony Edwards was like scoreless in the first half, besides like a couple late three throws, and then took over late, uh, just dominated. The, the Wolves are just, they're just, they're so good. Uh, so yeah, Conley, Conley will sit. Uh, would expect to kill Alexander Walker to get back in the starting lineup there. And obviously, uh, Monte Morris, Jordan McLaughlin would also benefit um, a little bit there. Slow mo uh, playing a bunch. And then again, like, who the hell is guarding Nas Reed? <laughs> I, I thought about that writing matchups yesterday, and that was before I, I saw this. So um, it's bad. So uh, Nas coming off 25 point game in a tougher matchup. He might go like 20 for 20 for like a 40 pointer. Um, kidding. So. 
but uh yeah that's pretty much good to go but you know uh Nikhil alexander walker um mclaughlin and, and monte will pick up some minutes with mike conley getting the night off just for rest so he's totally fine sort of a small note there that um <clears throat> i i obviously think this could be a matchup that Rudy Gobert just absolutely smashes on the boards. But yep. Conley Conley is a big loss for Gobert's offensive side of things because Conley, Gobert, pick and roll is kind of a integral part of how they run things. They don't have anybody else that really runs that the same way for Gobert. So um, it might be a, a matchup, as you alluded to, that the offense flows through Nas Reed a little bit more um, as well without Mike Conley. And okay. I'll add, I mean, did it, we? Know, if you go back to post-break, uh, we saw the, um, when Chris Finch was at the All-Star game, he was like, hey, you know, we're going to use the back-to-backs to manage guys. And, like, Carl Anthony Towns got hurt in a back-to-back. They're not doing that, you know? Like, guys are getting hurt, and, like, they're sitting them because they're injured. Like, do you just downgrade Gobert, man? Like, he's playing through this rib thing. Uh, mm-hmm. They talked about needing to have the wings rebound more because Gobert is, like, ailing a little bit. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets downgraded to a Q or something. Mm-hmm. Like, this is just such a layup for them. All right, last game of the slate to cover Cleveland and Phoenix, as you alluded to, the, the second game that has big um, playoff best ball, playoff seeding implications tonight. Cleveland on the second night of a back-to-back here got a much-needed win um, in Utah last night. It feels crazy that Cleveland is once again on a back-to-back just because their schedule just has been so, so incredibly difficult in terms of the volume of games and travel that they've had to deal with over the last two months. They have not filed on the injury report yet, but I would, I would fully expect – to see some some notes here. They did have these guys playing kind of deepish into the fourth quarter in a game that was mostly in hand, which also is a little bit of a tell sign for me that we might see some tags here. So what are your expectations for what we see from Cleveland tonight? So I'm expecting Donovan in. We saw him get that out of nowhere. You know, him and Kawhi Leonard had the out of nowhere downgrades. Um, I'm expecting him in, man. Uh, I think that they were going to start him. We saw Karis LeVert had the didn't have a starter jersey on. So I think that you know they were planning Mitchell to start at shooting around, and they just kind of downgraded him. And I'm pretty sure he's in. I'm pretty sure Donovan's in. So we know the starting lineup is going to be Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Max Strus, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. I think a coral still misses um, the great toe, which I don't know if you saw the show. Dink yesterday, not yes. to call out Dank if he's listening. Dank missed it. I could not believe uh, Dank missed the great toe on uh, Isaac Okoro. Um, sorry for making you feel bad, Dank, if you're listening. But um, and then yeah. Uh, although I do have to give Dank props. Uh, he called out Sam Merrill just to jam jam three point overs and uh, Utah State narrative. Easy, easy money, easy game. Um, six three. So yeah, we'll see on Okoro, uh, which would swing the matchup for Devin Booker. He would have a really soft matchup here. Uh, and then you know Darius Garland got trapped a lot last game. Like what the hell, um, Utah? That's not your game, man. Um, so very uncharacteristic. But yeah, um, so expecting mostly the guys back, keeping on Okoro. Dean Wade still doesn't sound like he's close though. Um, any concern on Struce Garland? No. Somebody getting a game off here. It's just been like I know I know Struce missed a bunch of time, but it just feels like it feels like we're gonna see more. I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure they're good, but I mean, yeah, they did have the minutes a little bit higher. Um, Moby's been playing really well lately. Jared Allen playing a bunch, so no, I'm, I feel pretty good that they're gonna be healthy. I think they really need to get this win. Yeah, I mean they're certainly they're right now a game up in the loss column on Orlando and the Knicks. That's that th- it's going to be very interesting to see how things shape out in the Eastern Conference because I think people are going to be very excited about a three seed where you could potentially play Indiana if it's Indiana. But if it's Miami, I think they're going to be less excited about that three seed. Um, and then you can't get up to the two, and then the options are just like you know playing Miami or Orlando and New York. And I think Orlando is the next team that people would be most excited to target. Um, in a four or five. And right now they currently have a game lead on Orlando and New York. I think home court is first priority, uh, which the three seed guarantees. So I think they're playing every game to win, but it will be interesting to see if there's some manipulation late in terms of where the, the play in status hangs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Phoenix side, Grayson Allen listed questionable here with left hip soreness. Damian Lee listed out. What are your notes on Grayson Allen? Uh, not much uh, minor. I think he's going to probably play. Uh, if he, didn't play a little unsure on how he would start. We know like Eric Gordon's more of a one to one, but I think Royce O'Neal's been too good. So, um, like my first instinct was to lean Gordon, but like I don't know. I don't think Gordon's playing well enough, so I kind of think they might start Royce O'Neal. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Um, 
Like you got enough, you kind of got enough playmaking. I think you want to have the defense a little bit more, especially. I think with that's the, right. The pack. I think yeah. that's. I think that's probably right. And you play a little um, bit bigger against a big front court, so I think Royce makes more sense. Yeah, I could definitely see that and keep Eric Gordon kind of in the six man role. You don't definitely don't need the extra offense. Uh, yeah. in these lineups. Uh, but as you can Kevin see here Durant in the good. in the in the minutes on the this last game, right? Uh, this game was largely in hand in the fourth quarter, but the importance of this game, like mm-hmm. look at these minutes for the main guys. They blew so it though. I think I think we're gonna see this. Again. I think we're gonna see this um in the last uh, uh like in in the um in the last few games for Phoenix. I, I think they're really trying to do everything they can to potentially stay out of the play in, which is gonna be really challenging because their schedule is not easy. Um and it's they're the obviously in the the A spot right now. So I think we're going to see really condensed minutes from Phoenix from here on. Yeah, out. And as I mentioned, uh, Evan Moby is going to probably guard Durant. Uh, we haven't seen him guard Durant since he was on the nets. Uh, so haven't have no really foundation for a matchup. But as I mentioned, like Noah Coro, man, Booker could just go off again. Uh, pretty crazy stat, you know, 50 plus points against the Pelicans in three straight games. Uh, only player to do that against the same franchise as Wilt Chamberlain. So, uh, Booker is cooking, and yeah, he just well, that was a master class of uh, putting it on Herb, man. Uh, he's like the new Herb killer uh, after it was SGA. Yeah, but... back to back 50s on Herb, which is really something. Um, all right, that'll do it for this edition of Established Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. We do have a few things to make sure that you're aware of uh, tonight on Playback, playback.tv slash ETR. We have Watch Party Wednesdays. So every Wednesday uh, during the course of the NBA season, we will be on Playback. TV, you just join over there, uh, confirm uh, your leak pass settings. If you have leak pass, link it and connect it. If not, let us know. We'll have about 20 passes to give out for daily leak passes. You can watch uh, the shows as we are the games as we uh, stream along. And we're going to continue to sweat bets there, find some more live betting opportunities. We'll answer your questions and talk through things. So we really appreciate those of you who are taking the time to join and hang with us while you're watching basketball. Um, if you're you know, at home watching League Pass tonight, might as well do it with us over on, on Playback. So playback.tv slash ETR. Uh, make sure to join the community. We'll send out some notes in Discord and on Twitter beforehand, but that's 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to start with that Orlando-New Orleans game that I have been talking about watching uh, most tonight, but we'll be flipping around, uh, sweating our bets and, and whatnot. So join us there tonight. As always, if you are interested in supporting the content that we're putting out, the best way to do so is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, We are about 150 subscribers short of our goal of getting to 5,000 by the end of the NBA season. So uh, appreciate your efforts there. If you're interested in any of our premium content, you can find myself and Chris Lafficus on the Paywald show tonight uh, at 5 o'clock Eastern, breaking down the good chalk, the bad chalk, the contrarian plays, and of course the flag plants. So check us out, 5 o'clock Eastern, establish the show. If you have a subscription to any of our premium DFS content, you also get access to our play playoff best ball rankings for underdog in the dance competition that we've been talking about through. We did a free pod kind of laying the, the land, laying out the guidelines and uh, the framework of the contest. And then we did a premium pod that's behind the paywall breaking down the strategy. So check out all the premium content, establish run.com slash subscribe dash MBA for more details there. And if you enjoy this free content and want to keep it free, the best way to do so is to smash that like button. And of course, help feed that algorithm, which helps feed our families and allows us to feed you the NBA injury information analysis you need each and every day to set your season-long lineups, your DFS lineups, and make your spread bets and your prop bets. So smash that like button, feed that algorithm. Nom, 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 nom. Come hang out with us tonight on Playback. Take care, everybody.